Hello, hello, talking about supply today, video 2.5. Uh, really quickly, uh, wanna make sure if you are watching this video, you are comfortable with the, the changes in demand in terms of how those things all go down graphically, the terminology. I'm gonna go really fast through here, through a lot of material, get it all in one place. So I'm assuming some prior knowledge is gonna push you through in understanding this. So if you're coming at it kind of fuzzy on demand and how things work graphically, go back, watch those, make sure you're good with that before diving into this. I definitely wouldn't work backwards on this, at least the way this video is set up. All right. So a lot of information here. I'm going to fit into one video. All right. So let's get into it. So supply itself is the amount of a product that would be offered for sale at all possible prices. The only difference here between supply and demand is that supply is about how much is going to be offered, whereas demand is about how much is going to be purchased. At, at, at all possible prices. Okay. So the, the major, the major difference here is that from the perspective wise, we're looking at this from the supplier or the seller's perspective, as opposed to the consumer uh, with the demand curve. Now th that the demand is usually easier because of the fact that we are all consumers and uh, not all of us necessarily are sellers or producers, or even have that like entrepreneurial mindset. So we have to kind of look at this from that perspective in order to make sense of this. All right. So make sure you're, you're practicing that understanding that you're always looking at it from the standpoint of a producer. We do illustrate the supply curve or supply through the supply curve, uh, similar to what we see with the demand. It's going to look, it's going to be on the identical, the like same graph. The supply curve is different uh, because it is upward sloping as opposed to downward sloping. So it's going to form an X ultimately when we put them together, but we'll get into that later. Again, we still can have an individual supply curve looking at one company or one seller, uh, or we can look at an overall market for an industry uh, and do that. So that can be both ways, just like with demand. Now, getting into the law of supply, why does the supply curve have a different shape than the demand curve? This is because suppliers are going to offer more products for sale at higher prices than at lower prices. So this is a direct or positive relationship as opposed to that inverse relationship of the demand curve. So a uh, so in, in our case, when uh, if we are the seller and the price goes up, we're going to be more willing to sell at that higher price. And if the price goes down, we're going to be less willing to sell because of the loss in profits. All right. So uh, so we're going to see that as an upward sloping curve. So let's look at the changes that could occur here. Uh, with supply. First of all, we can have a change in quantity supplied where this is just like with the change in quantity demand and using the same terminology. Uh, the, the amount offered for sale changes as a result of a change in price. Uh, and what we're going to see is that only one thing can cause a change in quantity supplied just with demand and that is price and price only. So graphically, it's going to look like this. I got a few other things going on in this slide, so I know it's a little small. Uh, so you can see here just the point A, point B, the price goes up from 60 to 80, and we see an increase in quantity supplied as a result of that from 500 to 700, and vice versa. If we were looking at it from a decrease in price from 80 to 60, we are then moving from point B to point A on the supply curve, which would lead to a decrease in quantity supplied from 700 to 500. All right, so positive relationship. On a supply curve, they go together. Price goes up, so does quantity supplied. Price goes down, so does quantity supplied. All right, so that is a change in quantity supplied, just price. If we have another factor, which I will share those determinants with you in just a moment, if we have something else that causes a change in this quantity for supply, uh, that would be shown graphically as a shift. So suppliers are going to offer different amounts of products for sale, even though the, the price is still the same. So some other factor is causing that to occur. So graphically, it's going to look like this. I have two different ones here for you. Here is an increase in supply. So some factor other than price, because notice that the price stays at P1 that some factor other than that causes the quantity to increase from Q1 to Q2 in this case. All right. So that is also a shift to the right, just like with what we had with demand. All right. If we see a decrease in supply, it, we're going to show it, show it here down on the bottom graph as a shift to the left. Price stays at P1, but the quantity decreases from Q1 to Q3 in this case here. And again, uh, something other than price is causing these shifts to occur either as an increase or decrease. So let's get into those. Here are determinants of supply. First of all, you have your the column on the right here, a change in quantity supply, which results in movement along the curve. What causes that? Only one thing, that is price. Okay, so I put that on there for you. Now, in terms of the shifts, there are multiple things that could happen that could cause this, and the result is going to be a new curve altogether. 
most of them rely re revolve around resources and their their cost to produce. So cost of resources or the availability of resources needed to produce the product that's in question would cause an increase or a decrease. So if something becomes cheaper to produce or uh, easier to extract from the earth, uh, that would cause an increase in quantity or increase in supply, which would be a shift to the right. And the opposite would be a decrease. Technology changes that come along that make us more productive in our production, that can cause an increase in, in uh, supply. If we have to regress to a previous method that's not as efficient, that's going to be a shift to the left, a decrease. Any type of government regulation is going to affect the supply end first. Ultimately, might indirectly affect demand as well, but or, uh, at least the price. But from the beginning, it's going to affect the supplier. So any tax on a product is going to impact supply in a negative way. That's a cost to the producer of that. A subsidy, on the other hand, is the government giving money to an industry because they like what they're doing. So that's going to be an increase in supply. And any type of regulation, that's going to depend on what the regulation itself is, whether it's an increase or a decrease. You'd have to kind of make a judgment call on that. So if, if I'm in an industry that is polluting heavily, and I get and government steps in, creates a regulation to cut down on pollution that hurts me as, as a seller of that item. So that's going to shift my supply curve to the left, uh, you know, in that case. All right. So it all depends. It's going to be case by case on that. But any kind of government intervention is going to impact supply. The number of sellers will impact supply. So if there's more sellers in an industry, that's going to cause a shift to the right because supply is greater at the same price. And if some sellers move out, that's going to cause a shift to the left. And then finally, the, the expectations, change in expectations. The only thing that's an identical one to uh, demand, if you have the expectation of an increased price down the road, it's just going to work in the opposite way. So let's say price is going to increase six months from now. Right now, I might back off on production of that, knowing that in six months, I'll be able to make more money when I sell it at that higher price. So it's going to impact the supply today as a result of that. Now, super quick overview of that right there. I, I'm well aware of that. We'll do more stuff in class with this as well. And again, I'm assuming that the demand uh, background is already going to help us to understand this better. So this is kind of just the overview of supply and the determinants and how all of that works. All right. You guys have a good day.